So we're in Asheville, North Carolina. I'm here with Mark and Debbie Kuhn, who, uh, what, what, what did you guys do? I had this huge flag and just got the idea to put it out there as a, as a distress signal. Country's in trouble, man. So it was out there for at least a good week, week and a half, and uh, a city cop came by and um, actually wanted to know if we were okay. Because he said, yeah, yeah, I know this is a sign of distress, and uh, we were just wanting to make sure you guys were okay. And I said, yeah, I said, we're not breaking any laws or anything, you know, we, we wanted to make sure there was not some kind of ordinance against it. And he goes, no, 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 it's perfectly within your rights. And then we started noticing National Guardsmen walking up and down our street and driving by and looking and, and uh, the actual taking photos of our house. One of the National Guard guys came to the just, house early morning. And he, he read me the riot act on how disrespectful it was yeah. to hang the flag upside down and that he insisted he was fighting for my freedoms. Mm -hmm. And I uh, specifically told him that there was no way he was fighting for my freedoms. There's a National Guard post just down the road, so they travel up and down our road a lot. And the next thing we know, uh, we're awakened one morning uh, by a sheriff's deputy who we found out was a National Guardsman, just got back from Iraq, and... After the fact, after the yeah, fact. Apparently um, was friends with the other people who had been... Mark Radford, staff sergeant. Yeah. But anyway, he, he issued, uh, he said, you're in violation of flag desecration, and was, was very blunt, was not, didn't try to explain anything to us, just said, you're in violation, no, show he, me some ID. He, and he, he showed us a computer of printout of a law that we later found out was passed in 1912 or, or 17, like yeah, yeah, yeah. about burning flags and desecration of flags. Yes. And so there was a North Carolina statute about it, but it had was never enforced and was actually... And the Supreme Court Supreme overturned Court said, yeah. that yeah. law from North Carolina, of North Carolina. But anyway, he, 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 he spoke to us very abruptly, very, very, you know, just in short sentences. And we're like, this is, this is kind of strange. Something, something's wrong here. And I said, well, I'll take it down. I said, but I have a feeling, you know, that we're within our rights. And it'll probably go back up if we find out, you know, that we can't actually... I'll fly it. So he took it down, put it in the house, and he kept insisting for ID. And I said, why? Why? You know, are we under arrest or what? What are you and, doing? And why? he never said, he never verbally said to us that he was going to give us a citation. No. If it was a simple citation, I would have searched mm -hmm. for my ID and said, mm -hmm. here you go. Mm -hmm. But after we said, you know, what do you need to see our ID for? Mm -hmm. The next thing out of his mouth was, hands behind yeah, your back, back, you're under arrest. <laughs> and my comment was, for what? Mm -hmm. So so we turned around, went in the house, dead bolted the door, and was walking away. And he starts kicking at the door. He tried, he, tr he, he kicked the door, he tried to kick the door in. He couldn't kick it in. Five to seven times, couldn't kick it in. He punched the glass out, opened the, opened the deadbolt, walked into the Came house, and house. pursued went after me, got me back into the kitchen, uh, got me in a headlock, somehow I got out, I was raging mad, I turned around, he pulled his pepper spray out, I said, you're not pepper spraying me in my house, he put it away, she's on the phone, screaming bloody murder to 911. No, I wasn't screaming, well, but I was know, saying, you know, cop, somebody officer, broke yeah, in, officers, broke into our house. Yeah, right, and uh, uh, then he, he, then he ta it. takes his little, little steel, Baton thing, baton, yeah. Right. Which Whip was a thing. cheerleader. <laughs> he took <laughs> he took out his baton. He tried to go after me with that. He was the whole time he was pursuing me very slowly and mechanically. He wasn't talking to me. He said nothing when he was in the house except for he. The only thing he said to her was, "I called for backup when she was on the phone with 911." <laughs> So, she so hangs up I. the phone. She hangs up the phone as I'm walking away from him and and continually yelling at him in my own home. Mm -hmm. To get out. She says, "Out of the house! Run out of the house!" Mm -hmm. So she ran out and started yelling, "Stop traffic!" I run out of the house. 
he's chasing me around our car. I said, what are you arresting me for? He never said anything. You know, I can, I can only, cars I, I can only imagine. I ten can, <laughs> cop cars. We had cop cars and sheriff's deputies all up and down the street. There was ten cars here. They didn't know what was going on, and they, they came and and they pulled out their 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 uh, so, gun guns. So finally, the, said, yeah. I said, get so, down, honey. So Just finally, the next the next deputy that showed up at our house ran over to the scene of of Scarborough chasing me around my car, and he said. He pulls out a stun gun and says, down on the ground or I'm tasing you. Taser, taser or whatever, stun gun, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So she's, she's like, get on the ground, get on the ground. And I was like, well, I'm down on the ground. He handcuffs me. They handcuff her. Neighbors are watching the whole thing. Tons of cops show up. They put us in the back seat of the car. They had a little meeting behind the car to figure out what Scarborough was doing. For about 20 and minutes. For, yeah, and, I, and I started yelling, take me to jail now. Take me to jail now. And the, and they, the, the boys next door who were young college kids were right on it. They, they came out. They said, what's going on here? Uh, they got involved. Thank God. They got involved. And uh, they said, why are they being arrested? And they said, it's none of your business, you know, go, go back in your home, blah, 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 blah. And they said, excuse me, it is our business. These are our neighbors, and I want to know why they're being arrested. So, thumbs up to the neighbors for getting involved. And, uh, of course, they never really told them. But um, they went back in and immediately called the press and called everybody, got everybody involved in this. And um, that's how our story really got out instead of the media. Uh, the, now, the, now yeah, let's now let's officers. let's continue this. So we we were held for three something hours. What, what was ultimately your charges? Things like that, court wise. What all happened? Resisting and, arrest, assaulting an officer, desecrating the flag. We got an ACLU lawyer, and he was trying to plea bargain and and pull some funny stuff and make us look like you know we should be thankful that we're not going to jail for this. I said no 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 we're we're not we're not shooting any plea bargain. So. Um, I fired him, <laughs> called up the sheriff, called up the DA, said, I want to meet with you, I want to talk about this. And I met with them, they were great, they, they, they were sorry it happened. They said, we just want to make this go away. Yes, of course, we'll drop the charges. We got uh, the charges expunged, which means it's totally erased. Huh. And so, as we know it. Yeah, well, we got the paperwork <laughs> on it. But basically, it, it, was, it was just, <coughs> you know, a bad thing that never should have happened. And like I said, it was the mentality of the military going into the local law enforcement that got us into this mess. And he's still on the force. As far as we know. That's the, only, the only disappointment in this is that he was not punished for his actions. The only thing that's going to save this country is for people to turn off their TVs, mm -hmm. educate themselves in one way, shape, or another, and stand up to authority.